Good evening, everybody. We're here with Abnormality at uh, Fontaine Levesque uh, Apache uh, events. Um, Abnormality is on tour now. Um, we're very happy to have an interview with them. Uh, they can introduce themselves. Hi, uh, this is Jared from Abnormality. Hi, this is Daniela. I'm actually filling in, filling vocalists. Can you give uh, impressions of the tour? Uh, what's uh, very special moments uh, in the tour? Um, some uh, general impressions of the tour? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, basically, Gorgasm is a huge influence on me, uh, and they're great guys. Uh, love the band. Ever the first time I heard Bleeding Profusely, I was I, uh, just loved it. So you know, it's an honor to be with these guys. It's Cenotaph traveling from Turkey is pretty wild. Um, so it's been awesome. I mean, the whole thing's been great. Good people, good bands, good crowds. Uh, the festivals have been off the hook. So you know, basically, Obscene Extreme was the craziest shit I've ever oh, yeah. fucking seen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've just never seen anything like that before. Um, but yeah, you know, Barcelona was amazing, but every, every show has been real great. So, you know, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I mean, for me, it's been kind of like this new experience because I have never really been on tour this long, which is actually weird because it's only like, uh, 14 days or so. So I started right away after I've seen extreme. Uh, and it's been amazing so far. I mean, uh, the biggest show we had was in Barcelona. Uh, the, the people, I mean, were amazing. Just, just huge fans and also great place we played. What else? What else? Cheers, hey, guys. Barcelona. Hey, Barcelona. Can you give a short view of the band? Okay, so uh, basically Abnormality is essentially kind of a, uh, started out as a side project. So where we're from in uh, the Boston area in Massachusetts, United States, uh, there was another band called Terratism um, where Jay was, Jay was playing drums. And uh, basically what happened was Malika came to a show and they, they brought her up on stage and had her sing a song. And uh, it blew Jay away so much that he, he then and there just took her aside and said he, he wanted to start a band. Um, so they got together. They got a couple other members. I came in shortly after that, probably, you know, a couple weeks after that happened um, and tried out. So it's kind of like this running joke, like they've never officially let me into the band. So they, they like to remind me about that all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically how it started. And, and here we are. So that's it. To know, finally. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, what are the influences of the band? Uh, I mean, directly, like uh, other death metal or trash metal or whatever metal bands, uh, and maybe also indirectly. Well, it's a uh, interesting question, uh, mainly because all of us have different influences, so it's hard to like pin that down. We all kind of come from different schools musically, so. Myself, I grew up really into punk rock. I loved Black Flag and The Clash and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and then I got into hardcore and then grindcore and then death metal. So I kind of skipped the, the big four heavy metal uh, thing. But a lot of the other guys, you know, are, are came up through Metallica and, and Slayer and all that stuff. Um, but as far as influences me personally, uh, it, it's a pretty wide range. Uh, you know, I'm a... I'm pretty crazy dude, like as far as like just in everyday life. So my music tastes reflect that. <laughs> uh, but I would say in abnormality for sure, you know, obviously origin suffocation is a big one for us. Um, Deeds of flesh, uh, you know, basically just brutal technical death metal stuff that, you know, stuff that that is technical but not technical for technical sake it's it's technical to pummel you right and and that's kind of what we shoot for um but i know the other guys have a lot of black metal influences and and uh, all kinds of stuff so it's a wide range of influences to be honest but you know directly speaking i would say yeah definitely the, the heavy hitters of of the brutal death metal scene so so now a hard question uh, I pose to everyone in uh, YouTube. 
You suppose you're on a desert island, uh, you don't have radio, you don't have internet, you can only listen uh, on a record player to three vinyls or three CDs on a CD player. Which three albums uh, would you listen to? Whatever your influences are, just uh, as a human being, what uh, satisfies yourself uh, with three albums? Here's where I get exposed, <laughs> all right, because I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna choose some fucked up shit here. Do it. But uh, I'm sorry, I, you know, time. the very first one is going to be the very first record that like just made me love music, and that's going to be Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction when I was 12. Um, my mother, we were watching the the Music Awards, and Guns N' Roses won, and they came out to accept the award on live TV, and they were just all fucked up and trashed, and they were swearing on live TV. And my mom tried to run and find the, the cassette tape I had and take it away, so I had to hide it from her. And it, that's when like music really impacted me. It became dangerous, and and uh, it, you know it's just a huge huge album for me. Other than that, um, I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan, so I got to go with the Wall. Uh, before any tour, I, I fully download the entire thing and I just listen to it from front to back. Uh, I love Gilmore. Uh, I think he's a phenomenal guitarist. Like, and I, I love the Waters Gilmore era of Pink Floyd. Um, and it's just such a, you know, amazing landscape of, of a record. Like, just conceptually, musically, everything is amazing. Um, now I got to pick a uh, a third one. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I'm probably gonna go with uh, Faith No More, Angel Dust. Uh, granted, this list could change tomorrow, <laughs> but Faith No More, Angel Dust is is such a phenomenal sequel to such a, a big hit. You know, it was uh, when it came out. I I don't think people realize like Epic. You know, was such a huge hit for them. The record label, I'm sure, wanted them to, you know, to kind of try to repeat that. But they came out with this album that was so completely different and just wild and free. Uh, it, it's a, it's an amazing record, front to end, you know, front to back. Every song is amazing. The musicianship, the the creativity that went into it, it's it's awesome. So that's my list. I'm gonna shut up and hand hand the mic over. Okay. Okay, man. This is this is also hard. Okay. Uh, so if I were to pick up uh, three uh, albums, you know, uh, I would say I think the first one would be uh, actually a live album from Rammstein, Live House Berlin, which is kind of a weird choice probably, but for me not because uh, they were actually the first band that introduced me into this hardish music uh, and also uh, I was really hooked on German and it kind of like... Uh, intervened with my studying so actually pretty helpful uh, the second album uh, would be from death uh, symbolic uh, was the first cassette I had it was actually I didn't even uh, buy the cassette I was handed uh, to it uh, it's just kind of uh, interesting story uh, because we are friends with uh, these uh, people and they uh, had an uncle uh, who was really into this hard music and I was I think I was about 12 or 13 years old so it was kind of like I never really had a clue uh, about uh, this music uh, and uh, uh, this is kind of sad because uh, he had an accident uh, and he died and uh, I got some of these cassettes uh, from them so I kind of like a uh, tried it to listen to it at first first impressions wasn't uh that good but uh you know i i gave it a chance and you know just the end of crystal mountain it kind of like uh blew my mind so that's the second one and the third i would choose probably album from soil work figure number five because I, I think uh, every every single on this album is is this really huge hit, and you can listen to it like for hours and hours and like have a good time and be pumped with good energy, and I think uh, it would come uh, helpful when being on desert island. So that's it. <laughs> so now before we conclude the interview. Um have some yeah, special thing uh, because uh, Steve Stahl from Brutal Female Fronted Metal he said uh, he's gonna help us, he's gonna uh, diffuse this interview uh, because um, 
Abnormality was a special thing for him. Uh, it gave him uh, special opportunities. Um, he just uh, asked me to read this uh, for um, this interview. If uh, maybe you can hold the microphone. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. Um, brutal female fronted metal would like to thank Malika for being the single voice that led the success of uh, the page. Fact is, uh, brutal female fronted metal was a no knee but admitted sexist in its portrayal of female vocalists in the beginning of the page. However, thanks to Malika's single expression of dislike about this fact to Danny Z, who in turn shared the info with me, was I able to see that my outlook was insulting to the woman that I was trying to promote. In turn, I immediately realized that I was doing was wrong and I changed my portrayal uh, of female fronted artists for being object of beauty to being objects of solent. After doing this, uh, the page started growing at an amazing rate and continues so every day. Bottom line, uh, brutal female front of metal will uh, forever be thankful to Malika for speaking out, which helps to see the light uh, of my shameful portrayal of artists in the outset of the page creation. Brutal female front of metal is now proud to be respected as a beneficial media force for female fronted bands. Investing hundreds of dollars uh, per month, so also for this interview, we are very thankful, uh, Steve Stahl, for this, um, to promote the future of metal music. Um, is being driven by today's awesomely talented woman of metal. So thank you, Steve. Um, this interview was done uh, by Jan Vervake for uh, Metal to Infinity, but also for Jan Vervake YouTube and Facebook page. Um, before we close, uh, maybe you can say, uh, give us uh, how people can find you best, uh, your sites, uh, your social media, and then we say goodbye to the people. Well, awesome. Um, basically, you know, if you're looking for us, uh, Facebook, you know, forward slash abnormality, uh, metal, Bla metal blade records, forward slash abnormality, you know, abnormality at Twitter or, uh, you know, any of the other bullshit social fucking sites <laughs> that exist that are ruining fucking our society. Yeah, you know, but yeah, we be, still appreciate be, you guys, yeah. you know, coming by and, <laughs> and hanging out and uh, come out to the shows, support death metal. Fuck yeah. Uh, and that's it, man. Cheers. Okay, uh, so I've, I've, I now uh, realized I've uh, almost forgot to mention my bands, because, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I originally come from uh, Prague, Czech Republic. I sing in two bands there. Uh, one is this modern death metal uh, band called Diligence, and the other is uh, Sludge Doom metal band the Corona Lantern that uh, originally started as a side project uh, of me and guitarist from Diligence uh, and then it kind of like uh, moved into the band because we liked so much the first two singles we made so we kind of just wanted to make an album and have fun so we did I will try to uh, do it from now on so thank you Cheers. Cheers.